Hi there, this is Ed from Barnabas Robotics. Uh, this is the first of three videos I'm going to make uh, that have to do with the Wheel of Fortune project. Up here in your top right, you see a little box here. That's where our parts are. Uh, this first video is going to be the introduction. We're going to do the basic build, uh, basically get our little wheel spinning. Uh, and then after that, we're going to add uh, extra power to it in the second video. And then in the third video, we're going to add a button so that we can control uh, the, uh, the wheel off and on by pushing it. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, this is my friend BB-8. Uh, you may have seen him from movies like Star Wars. Uh, I like to use him just to explain what makes up a robot. Because after all, this is a robot, build a robot uh, project. And so before we start, I want to say, think about, you know, what what is a robot? So let's take a look at BB-8 here. Uh, well, let's see. The first thing I notice is that BB-8 has a body. So his body has this big round tummy thing here and then a kind of dome roundish head, right? And his body is made out of plastic. Now in the movie, it's probably made out of uh, metal and, and maybe some plastic pieces and, and things like that. Uh, so that's the first thing I want to point out. Every robot's going to have some kind of body. And the word for uh, the body of the robot is mechanical. So I do want to point out, I do have this worksheet here, and you can download this and print this out if you don't have it already. It's also going to be on a link uh, with this video. You'll notice in box number one, and I'll put it up here on the camera there, it says mechanical design. Okay, so later we're going to make some drawings there. Um, that's going to be the, the picture of the robot's body that we're going to make. Okay, and I'll leave this here because the next thing we're going to talk about is this number two box where it says electrical design. Okay, so you talked about uh, the body here for, for BB-8. Now, when I press this button here, it's kind of cool. When I press this button, it's going to make sounds uh, and lights are going to come on and everything. So let's check it out. Pretty, pretty cool. Okay. So there's something in this BB-8 robot that allows the sound to actually work. There's something in there that gives BB-8 power. So you might be thinking of it already. Uh, the answer is it's a battery. So inside the battery is the energy that allows the lights to turn on and everything. So if BB-8 ran out of battery or if we opened them up and took out the battery, if I press the button, nothing would happen, right? So that's the other part that's super important uh, for a robot. It's the battery. Now, I like to call the battery of the robot uh, the heart, okay? And the reason I call it like that is because the heart Kind of like in, in our human body, the heart gives us energy and it pumps blood through our entire body for us to function, for us to work. And without the heart, our body is not really going to work, right? So same thing with uh, the robot. So the robot's heart is the battery, right? Now the thing that's inside the battery, the thing that is pumped out of the battery is not blood like us, it's electricity. Okay, and electricity is the thing that needs to go all around BB-8 so that he can actually work. All right, okay, so if you look at box number two here, my camera view, number two is electrical design. All right, and that has to do with the robot's heart that helps the robot actually turn on. If we didn't have any electricity or electrical part uh, for our robot today, it wouldn't be able to work. So even if we had a body but no heart, it's not going to work. All right. Now there's a third part of of BB-8 and of robots, and that's the brain. You know, for us, if we just look, think back about our human body, we have a body, we have a heart, and then another important part is the brain. The brain helps us make decisions, uh, holds our memories and stuff like that. It determines if we go want to go that way or this way. Uh, what do we want? Or, or just stay still and go to sleep. Robots will have that same kind of thing where they can 
uh, think and act on its own. So if you watch BB-8 in the actual movie, BB-8 can actually has his own personality, right? You know, he's got his own mind where I, I want to go this way, I want to go this way, or I have a message, or whatever it may be. Um, now for a robot, it's not like our exact same brain, right? Because robots have their own special brain. Um, the robot brain is going to be the computer, okay? A computer is the thing that holds all the information um, and stores all BB-8's memories and things like that. So we won't get to that third part. We're not going to do a computer in this robot because this is one of our first projects. Maybe in the future we have some other projects where we can work with the robot brain. Okay, so now that we have uh, an idea of what makes up a robot, let's go ahead and start uh, on our mechanical design, all right? So if you look at my whiteboard here, let me move this. Let's go ahead and draw on box number one, mechanical design. And remember, the mechanical is the body of the robot. Now, real quickly, what is what is design? So I like to think of it this way. When you build something, it's when you actually take your hands and put things together. Like if you're playing with Legos or you're building something out of rocks or cardboard, it, the build is a fun part and you get to just actually put the thing together. Now, what is design? Design is to think and imagine what you're gonna build before you actually build it. And then it's also writing it down. So a design is going to have pictures and or writing. Okay, and it's, it's our imagination. It's what it's going to look like before we build. So as good engineers that we're trying to be, we want to design or think and imagine and write it down before we build. Uh, and we want to make sure that whatever we build matches what we draw and write. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead. We've got our mechanical design. So the first thing that we're going to draw in our box number one is a square. Okay. And the next thing we're going to draw is we're going to draw two feet here. Now the feet are going to be underneath the box here and it's gonna help our box be stable so it doesn't fall topple over, okay? Because this thing might be going pretty fast. Okay, and then we're gonna draw this thing here, a little square, a little dot here. This is actually gonna be the motor, okay? And the motor will connect to our spinning wheel. There's our spinning wheel. All right, I think that's a basic design. There might be some extra components, extra things that we add on, but I think this is good enough for now. So we have an idea of what it's it's gonna look like. Let's go ahead and number these things. Uh, number one for the box. Number two. Number three for the uh, two feet here. The motor, let's say it's number four. And then the plate which is going to be our wheel, will be number five. Okay, so our next thing is let's open our box and see if we can find the thing that represents number five. Now I kind of already gave it away. It's the plates, right? So let's open it up and I see the plate, right? And it kind of matches my drawing. My, my drawing's not, it's not a perfect circle, right? But it does look like this. I'm gonna move this out of the way. So I have my plate. All right, so this is our first kind of fun, artistic moment here. So with this plate, what we wanna do is we wanna make a spinny wheel. I call this project the Wheel of Fortune because the Wheel of Fortune is a show, if you've seen it, where uh, contestants, they spin the wheel and they try to win prizes and money as they try to play this kind of hangman uh, game where they guess guess a word or sentence okay so i want to give some examples of spinny wheels to in inspire us you know so this is a time that you can make your little wheel special to you um sometimes you don't have sometimes you have ideas right away sometimes you 
uh, don't have ideas right away. So I like to just kind of inspire you, um, give you some some ideas in case you might need some. Okay, so this is a color wheel, part of the base. So you can just uh, make different colors. Maybe uh, you spin this wheel and it just helps you decide what color uh, sock you want to wear today or what kind of what color shirt you want to wear. Um, that could be an example. Um, here, here are examples of two other wheels here. One, this one has numbers. Uh, so maybe this wheel could be a game where you spin the wheel and you see what number you get. And the, the more numbers you get, or the higher number, you win the game. Or maybe it becomes a math wheel, right? Where you spin it twice and you add whatever numbers you get those two times. You add those or subtract those or multiply those to see um if you can get the answer that might be interesting a math wheel uh then uh looking up over here what is this this is a wheel with with words on it that says backpack hats got prizes so maybe your wheel will you have a little carnival uh wherever you're at you know in, in your room when people come in they can spin the wheel and see if they can win something you can write in you know hat or backpack or whatever it it may be here. Um, I've seen students also do chore wheels. So if you have to do a chore, you have to spin the wheel and then you see what, what chore you wanna uh, end up doing. Uh, and then I also saw this was kind of cool, is a uh, emoji wheel or feeling wheel, kind of you spin it and maybe it tells you uh, how you're feeling uh, uh, that day, okay? So these are just some, some fun examples. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on on my wheel and uh, let's see here okay so the first thing we want to do is I want to make eight different pizza slices here um, I like to say pizza slices because I like pizza so first thing is cut the pizza in half there all right, and you know, I didn't get it quite perfect. You might want to do it better than me. I just realized I'm kind of doing this at an angle. So um, I didn't quite cut it in half, but that's also a lesson. It doesn't need to be perfect, right? One thing I want you to, to keep in mind when you're making this thing, it's gonna be the only one in the whole entire world. No one will have ever made a plate, Wheel of Fortune thing exactly like yours, okay? So I want you to just remember that, you know, it's unique. You are unique. Okay. So even if it's not perfect, it's unique. So I have one half. Let's cut it into four pieces like this across there. All right. And then I want eight, right? So then I need to go here and then I need to go here and yesterday uh, I was giving a little virtual field trip and someone gave me an inspiration of, you know, because I said pizza, what if this actually was a pizza, right? Um, so I'm going to draw some pepperonis in there. Have you ever had broccoli on your pizza? Maybe. Um, mushrooms, right? Mushrooms go on pizza. What else? Sausage? Maybe sausage kind of looks like this. Um, a happy face because I love pizza and I get happy whenever uh, this is another pepperoni here. Whenever you eat pizza, onions. I think onions kind of look like this, right? Uh, what else? What else could be on my uh pizza here oh bacon have you ever had bacon on your pizza i think that kind of looks like bacon right and then let's think of something interesting this is random my son really likes cheerios so i'm gonna say you can also have cheerios on your pizza all right i got a few different colors here not everything i need but let's see green i have for broccoli all right, and so you can make yours. You could pause the video, spend a little time, um, and make yours based on what you want. Uh, but as I'm doing this, I just got an idea, right? So maybe this is um, a wheel that determines what toppings I put on my pizza. If you've ever 
uh, made your own pizza at home. That's pretty fun. And this wheel could decide, oh, you want Cheerios, mushrooms, or bacon, or pepperoni. All right, so here's my wheel. Your wheel will look different uh, from, from mine. Uh, but the point is, put a little work into it, right? Think of what you want to do with the purpose behind this wheel, and then you, uh, then you have your special, your unique uh, spinny part, spinny uh, plate part, all right? So let's go back to our drawing and see where we're at. Okay, moving out. I'm trying to find my drawing, and here we go. Okay, so we have this part was number five. So number five is done. So we can do like a little, little check mark. Maybe I'll use uh, green, right? Number five is done. Cool. What should we do next? Uh, well, let's let's look at number four actually. So number four, as I mentioned, is the the motor. And let me just move over here. Bigger screen. Okay. So number four here is the motor. So I want you to look into your box, and we can just start taking everything out. Uh, this thing we'll put to the side and this we'll put to the side and then this bag has the motor here All right so when we took everything out and we go ahead and close this okay so this has the motor let's take out our motor and there's nothing we really need to do with it because the motor is the motor. Um, let's take a look at it. Okay, motor has two wires here, black and red. The black is gonna be minus, okay? And the red is plus. Why does that matter? It's gonna make sense in a second. Black is minus, red is, is plus. So the motor is the part that's gonna make our spinny wheel uh, spin here. But the important thing is, as we talked about with the BB-8, it's not going to work without electricity. It's not going to work without a battery. So let's let's talk about that. Okay, inside this baggie, you're going to see two batteries. Okay. You can open it. Let's take out one of these batteries. Okay, you might need to cut this with scissors if you need to. Okay, we'll put the other one here for the side. So you got your battery here. I want you to notice that on the battery, let me change my, on my battery here, there's a plus, and then there is a minus, but the minus there, it doesn't say minus. So let's be engineers and try to figure this out. Plus, it says it's up here. So this little bumpy part, that's the plus. What would be the minus then? Maybe the opposite of that, which is down here. All right. So the battery also has a plus and a minus. Cool. Put our, our motor here. Let's talk more. Let's learn more about this, this thing here. All right. All right. So now we're going to look at the electrical design. So box number two. So if you see my sheet up there, box number two, we're going to draw on this box. Here. All right. So let's talk about this battery. Let's first draw the battery. And remember I said I like to use heart for battery. So we have our battery here. And it has a plus and also a minus okay and remember I said in the battery you have energy or electricity so right here if you look on that top right holding up the battery there is actually energy there's electricity inside of it right now but nothing's happening right nothing's moving uh, nothing's getting hot there's nothing happening 
but the energy is inside of it. So how do we get it out? Well, in order to answer that question, I need to introduce you to my friend, Mr. Electricity. Mr. Electricity. Right now, Mr. Electricity, he's not happy. He's also not sad. He's just kind of there. Now, here's the thing about Mr. Electricity. He's really fun. He's really energetic, right? Whatever, wherever Mr. Electricity goes, things just move. Things just turn on. He literally lights up a room or, in our case, makes a motor turn on. But the thing about Mr. Electricity is he needs... Um, a couple things to happen for him to come out. All right, so let's go ahead and first draw our motor because that's where we want Mr. Electricity to go, right? So let's draw our motor here. And as a reminder, this is box number two that we're drawing in. And let's put a plus and a minus for our motor too. All right, if you look at my top right there, I have my motor and I have my battery. Cool. Move that out of the way. Cool. Less distracting. All right. We have our battery and we have our motor. Now, let's draw the wires for the motor. So you see the wire, the plus is red. And the minus is black. All right, so we kind of have what we have on our, our drawing matches what we have on our table right now. So how do we get Mr. Electricity to get super excited and come out and go through the motor? Well, here's rule number one. Mr. Electricity will not leave his house, which is the battery, unless there is a path. All right, so Think of it yourself, right? Would you leave the house if there was no path outside of your door? Like you just open the door and it just drops straight down to the ends of the earth. Like you would not want to go out, right? Same thing as Mr. Electricity. He's like, there's a path. I will go out. I want to go out, but there has to be a path. All right. So what we want to do now is go ahead and draw a path for Mr. Electricity. And you can draw it and we can connect it to the uh, motor wire there. Okay, so that's good. Now there's a path. Now think about it. You, you might get excited because you want to go out and play, but then you see the path and you're so great. So you start walking out, but then you look down the road and you see that the path doesn't return home. The path just ends, All right? So the thing with Mr. Electricity, he can only go one way, okay? And so if he goes out, he wants to be able to come home. So if we look at our path right now, we have a path, right? I'm gonna use a little highlighter here, actually. And let's show what would happen if Mr. Electricity came out. So he would come out and walk the path. And again, he can only go one way, this way. And he could go there, but then what happens here? He's stuck, right? And remember, he can't he can't go just go back home. The you know where he came from, he would get stuck, and he wouldn't be able to get home, and he would never be able to get go back and eat dinner and and sleep in his own bed. And so, so what happens is Mr. Electricity will not come out because he's like there's a path but the path doesn't go all the way home. Okay, so how do we get Mr. Electricity to actually come out and say, I'm gonna go out? We have to make a path for him. And then number two, the path needs to go all the way home like that. And the th way, you th way to kind of think about it, the plus is kind of like the front door and then the minus is the back door when he comes home. So he always goes out the front door and then back home through the back door. So once we do that, the Mr. Electricity says, oh, I'm gonna come out then. And he goes through here 
and then he lights off the the motor or turns it on and then he comes all the way back home and then once that happens mr electricity becomes super happy okay so that's how electricity works and now since we've talked so much i want you to also uh, bring your attention to box number three here where it says notes all right box number three there we're going to write our first word of the day which is circuit circuit so circuit, you're, you'll hear that word a lot when it has to do with uh, robotics or electronics, okay? And it's basically using batteries and playing with electricity, that, that sort of thing. Now, what is circuit? Circuit is simply this. It is a path for Mr. Electricity, okay? It's just a path for Mr. Electricity. So we just drew the path, right, for Mr. Electricity here. Now there are two types of circuits that I want to talk about. So there's there are different types of paths, right? Some paths work where Mr. Electricity will come out. So this path right here works because we have a path from the plus through the motor all the way back to the minus. So this is a good circuit. Uh, this in this case, Mr. Electricity comes out and it's called this. This is called a closed. circuit okay a closed circuit the reason why we call it closed is because there is no opening in the path it's totally closed up it's like a closed loop like a bracelet right so if the bracelet is like open it wouldn't stay on your wrist right but if it's closed everything's good everything um, everything's tidy and it works so same thing here our path is closed we have we can go out the front and back in through the back everything's good and so in the closed circuit mr electricity comes out it equals on so you can go ahead and write that in box number three as well closed circuit equals on all right it's one of those things so later on we're going to try to make a closed circuit to to turn turn it on okay last word that we're gonna do here or last I guess three words technically what if we do this what if we create an opening in the circuit so it's still a circuit right because it's still a path but what's the difference the difference is that it's an open circuit I have room here I'll write open circuit so for open circuit mr electricity i use a different color here he looks at the path and he's like okay i can look at the path it looks good it looks good it looks good it looks good but what wait i can't i can't get home right he can't get home because there's an opening so what's going to happen Let's fix, fix Mr. Electricity here. He's going to be very sad because he says, oh, so close. There's a path out there, but I can't get all the way back home. This is an open circuit. I'm very sad because I can't come out to play. So it's going to be off. The motor is going to be off because Mr. Electricity is not going to go through the motor. He's like, I'm, I don't want anything to do with that. You give me a closed circuit, I'll come out. But open circuit, I'm off. All right, so now that we know that, let's see if we can turn on our motor. All right, let me switch my camera here. Okay, so I still have my circuit up there. And let's go ahead and make a closed circuit. So a closed circuit, if you remember, is we make a full path. Let's see if I can... Go back here. Almost, almost, almost. There. 
Let's make this closed circuit, okay? And if we do it correctly, it should turn on. So closed circuit is we start with the path, the, the front door here, which is the plus, and then we're gonna connect the motor. And we wanna see this little spike here. Mr. Electricity can travel on that spike. So I'm gonna touch the spike to the little bumpy like this and kind of hold it there with my finger. Just an experiment here. So now he sees a path, right? He sees a path, it's cool. I can go here, I can go here through the motor, but then he says, sees this, oh, that is not gonna work. I don't like that, I can't get home. So we've actually make, made an open circuit right now, right? It's a path, but it doesn't go home. So this is an open circuit and it's off, not working. But once we give Mr. Electricity a way home, it starts working. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's working. Okay. There we go. So closed circuit, it's on. Open circuit, it's off. Now you can't really see what's, what's going on because this is turning but you can't really see it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a coupling. A coupling is in this bag. You're gonna see this little uh, circle thing, kind of looks like a coin with a hole in it, okay? This little hole fits this thing um, perfectly. So this little uh, rod here. So what you wanna do is take this and stick it in the hole. It's kind of hard. You got to push a little bit hard, but just get it in a little bit. And then you can go like this on the table and push down. And then there you go. All right. Now you don't want it to go in all the way. You want this to kind of be, you see it's flat. So the little rod here is called the motor shaft. That stick is not sticking out past uh, the coupling. Now, why do we call this the coupling? Uh, this is called the coupling because couple means to just put two things together uh, so the coupling here helps us connect the plate to the motor so now that this is on there we can try again and you should be able to see it spin much more easily here and there yeah you can see you can see it go very cool all right um, now let's stick these things together with this coupling. So we have this here. Um, we want to connect it to the back of uh, back of my plate so that it goes like goes like that. All right. So what we do inside this baggie, we have these double sticky foams. These are nice. Uh, it's like tape, but it's it's foamy and it's super sticky. So I'm gonna take one of these. These are pre-cut. So you don't need scissors or anything. You take one and then we're just gonna put it on the back of our plate like that. And then I'm gonna peel the little paper off. Okay. And then we're gonna take this and just stick it on. And I like to have my finger right here so that I can push this way with my finger as I push this way on the motor to get it really on there and then it should look like this nice and it should spin pretty cool now because i my uh <laughs> my pizza slices aren't perfectly centered it kind of spins in a funny way but that's okay again it's unique all right now let's see now let's go back to our drawing so what happens now okay so i finished number five i also finished number four but if we look at it it's connected number four which is this motor it it goes on to number one so what's number one one is the box it's this box right here so the way we made it was like you can use the box that it came in uh for your wheel all right so then we have that the next thing we need to do is take this 
and put it onto our box. So I like to, maybe I'll just hold it up like this. Okay, you can see me on my bottom right camera, right? All right, so here's the box here. I'm gonna put it, uh, turn it on this side so it doesn't have like the sticker here, right? Because then maybe you can put decoration here later. So let's put it like that. Then we want this to go like that, okay? So let me show you how to how to do that in this close-up camera. All right, so here's my here's my box here. I want you to notice the motor here. There's this side which is off flat, and then there's this side that has all this hot glue and all that stuff. I want you to turn it so that it's all flat and smooth. Let me change the big camera view here. Okay, and then. Let's take another sticky foam and let's put it right here. Okay, there we go. And then let's take off this little paper here so that this becomes sticky. And then we take our box and we can stick it on right here. Okay, let me show you maybe like this, you can see. You don't wanna do it like this, because if you do it like this, so you see the plates touching the box, that's not good, it's gonna get stuck. So you wanna do it like that. Okay, and then once I do that, you can look in my front view, it's gonna look like this. Okay, and then, now I should be able to turn it on. Now, there's, there's another thing to make this a little easier, okay? So you see how we could do this, like this, and, and, and get, it to, get it to turn on, right? But then I have to hold it there. So what we wanna do is actually get a battery house. In this bag, in this bag right here, you have two battery houses. It's these uh, black plastic things with these uh, black and red wires, okay? So you can just grab one of them, doesn't matter which one. You take one, and then we put, put the battery in there. The way it works is that the minus, which is the flat part, needs to touch the spring, all right? It's a little bit tricky. What you wanna do is take this, uh, remember the flat part, and put it over here on this side. There's these two little like flappy wing things, okay? You wanna kinda sneak it under the flappy wing thing and then once it's under there, you just push here with your thumb and then push, push, push. So the spring compresses or gets small and then you just snaps in. All right. And then now once that happens, you have these wires and we can look. The red wire is closest to the plus, which is that, that bumpy part, right? And then the black wire is closest to the minus. So black is minus, red is plus. All right, so now I'm gonna leave it, put it like this, you should be able to see. Now I can just connect these, these are like Lego, they snap in, okay? So I'm gonna go minus to minus, because that matches our circuit drawing. Uh, let me see if I can bring that up on my drawing over here. Yeah. Minus to minus and plus to plus, right? For a closed circuit. So red to red, there it goes. All right, let me hold it up this way so you can see. That is a pretty fast spinning wheel. So I have a closed circuit and then a open circuit. I can just open it up and then see, see where it ends, all right? Now maybe I wanna put an arrow there, right? So we could go ahead and, and do that. Uh, let's draw an arrow to kind of point at where it stops right. little arrow very nice cool I got broccoli I'm gonna enjoy broccoli pizza later all right, now another thing we can do is we can take this battery house and stick it 
onto the side here so that um, it doesn't fall off, right? So we have all, you could take another sticky foam, stick it on there, peel it off to make it sticky, and then you can really put it anywhere you would like. Um, I'm gonna put it, I'll put it here on this side. Very nice. And then now, let me show you my other camera. This is how it looks. I have it there, the battery is there. Uh, and then I can easily just turn it off and on with connecting this. Closed circuit. Okay. And open circuit. Great, so we're pretty much done with this. Oh, we almost forgot. There's another part of our drawing. Let's take a look. So we did, um, looking up top there, we did five, four, one. We still need two and three. All right, two and three, we got this, we got this. Okay, so two and three are gonna be in one of these bags and we have these two craft sticks or tongue depressors, okay? And what we wanna do is just put it as feet on the bottom here of the robot. So it's probably gonna be best if I show you on uh, this camera view. So here's my uh, stick and then you just put them as feet, kind of like, like this, okay? So how are we going to do that? Just with uh, with sticky foams. Okay, here we go. Let's get our sticky foams. So we sh there's two more here. Perfect. We just need one per. So I get put one sticky foam here. Let's put it in the middle. Maybe the middle, as close to the middle as possible. And I'll do the other one too. Okay, there, and then make sure they're both sticky. Pull off the little, okay, they're both sticky. And then we take this, this is the bottom of my wheel right here, and I just stick them on. Here's one, and here's the other one. Okay. Let me show you what it looks like here. This is the bottom, kind of like it's skiing. My robot wheel is skiing, right? And then now it has like a nice stand and uh, it won't uh, fall over. All right, let's turn it on. Let's give a closed circuit just to make sure it's working. There we go. And open circuit. Looking pretty good. All right, so the last thing that I wanna share with you in this video is I want you to notice, oh, let's actually check off just to be complete, right? On my top right there, I'm checking off number two and checking off number three. We are all done with our mechanical and electrical design. Awesome. Uh, one thing I wanna point out here is that if we look at our circuit, we drew it so that the plus connects to the plus and the minus connects to the minus, right? So that would be the black wire to the black wire and the minus to the, uh, sorry, the black wire to the black wire and the red wire to the red wire. Now, what happens if we flip it? Does it work? Maybe you've tried this already. Can, can we do black to red, right? And let me show you on this view. And black to red again. Would it still work? Yes, it does still work. So what's that about? But I want you to, to look closely. Is it the same exact thing? So if I go black to black, so black wire to black wire, 
red wire to red wire. Okay, it turns. Let's do black to red and black to red and see if it goes. It also turns, but if you notice, it's a little bit different. So the difference here, the difference here is that when you do it one way, it spins a certain way. If you do it the other way, when you flip it, it goes the other way, okay? And so there's this idea of clockwise, counterclockwise. So clockwise is when it spins the same way as a clock, okay? So I want you to experiment with that as well. So with that, you could say, oh, I want to do a closed circuit, but I want it to go clockwise, or I want it to be closed circuit, or I want it to go counterclockwise. So you can experiment uh, with how fast you can figure that out um, and play with uh, the circuits that way. All right. Uh, so that's where we're going to pause for now. So that's we've done the basic uh, builds of our uh, Wheel of Fortune. We learned about batteries and we learned about circuits, specifically open circuit, closed circuit. We also uh, learned about mechanical design where we drew uh, everything that we're going to design and we actually followed our design. I think we did a pretty good job uh, and we built pretty much exactly what, what we drew. Oh, and we also learned about sticky foams, super, uh, super strong sticky stuff that helps us make robots. We're going to need a little bit more of that in our next video too. All right. That's it for now. I'll see you in the next video. We're going to be adding a second battery to superpower our robot. Bye for now.